previous Mercedes GLC was one of the top selling models for Mercedes. In fact, it was one of the top selling SUVs. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. There's a fine line, but you know when it's time to fresh things up. So here we are, the brand new Mercedes GLC. Sleek, elegant, expensive looking, and it bloody is. This car starts from 62,000 pounds in the UK. A lot has changed on the outside, on the inside, in the way this car drives. So let's hop in, review and assess all these German developments. One, two, two three. A look what we've got under the bonnet when it comes to the choice of engines there's plenty to select from there's diesel there's petrol there's plug-in hybrid petrol in fact you get 11 choices in the uk well you don't get this particular one this is the glc 200 in the uk you get the glc 300 more powerful well more the merrier now this is a two liter four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine which produces 204 horses and 320 newton meters of torque. This is actually a mild hybrid, so we've got a small electric motor, but the motor won't run the car. You actually need a combustion engine. The electric motor gives us that extra shaft, that extra push that we sometimes need. The power is being sent to all four wheels. In fact, all GLC get an all-wheel drive system and automatic gearbox as standard. Now this grey colour is very elegant, but it's also a little bit sad. And it will still cost you £700 because the only standard colour for GLC is white. I do like the blue, not in blue, that's right. And that's enough about numbers and colours. have a look at the boot space but before we do mm, Mercedes absolutely and utterly fake exhaust pipes your exhaust pipes are actually down here why have you done it Mercedes completely unnecessary anyway the boot space is massive 620 liters of space bear in mind if you go for the plug-in hybrid version your boot space is being reduced by a third here you've got so much space the shape of the boots is very practical you've got underfloor storage let me just open that plenty of space to carry all your clutter you can fold the back seats down you've got hooks you've got very useful netting floor is completely flat which means you can easily slide items in and take them out mercedes has nailed the practicality and space with the glc In terms of space in the back, it is actually very good. I've got plenty of knee room, very good headroom. I love this panoramic sunroof. You've got the advanced climate control, very, very good. Middle seat, it's okay-ish for an adult, not for prolonged periods of time, but for a child, it's more than enough. I prefer not to have an adult in the middle. I prefer to just enjoy a lovely cup of coffee if the cup holder was working because for the time being only my mobile phone holder is working it's actually quite sad nowadays we need holders for our mobile phones can't we just live without them anyway it's not coming out oh well but overall the space here is just a lovely especially in this red color I think it is safe to say that the cabin here is simply gorgeous. A while ago, 
I have reviewed the C class. I'll put the link to the video somewhere on the screen. And I was really wowed with the cabin. History repeats itself. Just out here, there's a cherry on the cake. Literally. These red leather seats, I love it. Huh. The quality of the materials, the fit and finish is very, very good. I do like this combination of colors and textures. No fingerprints, but the look of it, very good. In some places, like the door bins, the plastic feels a little bit hard, but it's all right. Let's hop into practicality. Light bottle of water test, and the water is leaking, never mind. Easily fit that in your large door bins. Very good, you can pop that bottle in here as well. Very good. A bit more storage space, wireless mobile charging, USB-C port. Close that shelf to hide all your secrets. More storage space down here. Two USB-C ports. We've got a small compartment. Tidy home is a happy home. It is a German car, so it will be practical. A large glove box, and I like this velvet lining. Hmm. Climate controlled or jet turbine style. Mm, I'm not sure about these. I think I'm bored with them. I've seen too much of it. Maybe it's time for a change Mercedes. But for the time being, it is fine. What I do like, actually, is the steering wheel. It's thick. It just feels meaty, juicy, and beefy. I like that. Nice paddle shifters. The gear lever looks and feels a bit cheap, but anyway. Now, the shortcut buttons, I must admit, initially, they will appear to be a bit of a mambo jumbo and they will drive you crazy but i promise you with a bit of time and patience you will get your head around i have because it's i mean it's a germanic car left side operates a digital driver's display the right side operates your large beautiful screen all makes sense right so let's move on to this beautiful screen this is the mbux system in my personal opinion this together with iDrive from BMW, I by far the best infotainment systems available on the market. Again, it's a personal preference. Audi has tried, Volvo has tried, but I like, I like it. So you can operate this system with your finger or with the shortcut buttons on your steering wheel. So let's have a look at the system. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's simple, intuitive, but at the same time, it's got so much in it. Off-road, for example, you can have a look. All these settings for off-road, fun. Mm. Let's go to comfort, seat, seat kinetics. You can, in fact, position your seat automatically. Shall we give it a go? You can be as short as 145 centimeters, a little midget. 171 is what I am. Start positioning. Let's see how good you are, Mercedes. Ha! Oh. So, generally speaking, I like to uh, uh, sit very low, but that's just me. That's it. Really, Mercedes? Oh, mm, no, no, no. Oh, wait a second. I know. If I drive like this, I'll crash immediately, and collision means that I will have to repurchase a vehicle. You yeah, know. Mm. Anyway, we'll leave it at that. So that didn't work. Ambient lighting, beautiful. You have. 64 colors to select from. I like the purple. It just puts you in such a great mood. Let's look at the navigation and the graphics. Whoa. These are crystal clear. These are sharp, bright, and look how quickly the system responds to the touch of my finger. It is magic, magic, magic. Imagine if the world was like this. You point and things happen. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, yes. You can, of course, plug in your iPhone, your Android, but really, the system is almost too good to do that. You will waste it. So you have some touch-ish, physical-ish buttons down here to change your driving mode, your cameras. Look at that. I sound like a broken record. I mean, after all, I'm a woman. I like to repeat myself. Oh, these cameras are just brilliant. So good. Some settings for your car directly. So you have some... Um, some degree of manual buttoning, as, as you call it, volume control. But generally speaking, everything is operated with the screen. It's not too distracting, actually, when you drive. It's, a, it's actually really well designed as well. What else I was going to show you? Oh, yes, this is the finger sensor. So if you're sharing a car, for example, with your partner or anybody else, you can just set it up so that all your settings turn up automatically when you just press the finger. 
again, it's all press, go, press, go, and it's quick and it works every single time. So the cabin overall, what can I say? It is classy and elegant, just like the GLC. I'm going to launch this big German girl because speed is everything. Let's see how much juice we can get out of your German body. Sport mode activated, automatic start and stop button deactivated. Foot on the brake, foot on the throttle. Oh, off we go. I've got winter tires, so I will be a little bit slower. The declared zero to 100 is 7.8 seconds and I am 8.14. I suppose that's fine. I am a go-getter, so I'd like to be a little bit faster, but that is fine. The top speed is 221 kilometers an hour. I like launching big cars. There's a sense of satisfaction. I wish it was a little bit faster, but with this engine, 200 horsepower, it's fine. So the old GLC, well, the previous generation GLC, was a nice SUV. Pretty good to start with when it comes to driving dynamics. This, however, is a very different car. It feels a lot more premium, it feels posher, it is ever so comfy because the suspension absorbs all of the bumps, potholes and imperfections. It is also very quiet and relaxing. This particular model is beefed up when it comes to extras specifications. These are not free, these are not cheap. Come to think of it, very things in life are great and free or cheap. Now I activate a gentle seat massage called seat kinetics. I turn on driving assistance systems and essentially the car drives itself, which makes it an absolutely bombastic a long distance cruiser. And what else? It is cheap to run. The presence of the electric motor certainly does improve your fuel economy because on the Model Y you're looking at about 8 litres. Congested city, 9 to 10 litres. Now, this engine, generally speaking, is quiet and well mannered. But we do have a 9 speed automatic gearbox. Imagine 9 gears. Lots to ponder, lots to wonder and plenty of opportunities to cock it all up. Now, when you just cruise, it is absolutely fine. It changes the gears smoothly and quickly. But when you plant your foot, you see, you're here for yourself. I'm afraid the good manners go right out of the window. And more of the story is that this is not the engine to rev but to cruise and chill. And if you have the desire to have a bit more punch, just go for the bigger engine or go for the plug-in hybrid because this is not a small car. We also have the sport mode, so it's activated. Well, it says dynamic here and sport here. Which one is it, Mercedes? Make up your mind. It gives you a mild injection of energy, but can I get carried away by saying it becomes fun and it becomes sporty? Well, not quite. It was never designed to be like that. If you want to play those sporty games in an SUV, you can go for the likes of Maserati Levante or Alfa Romeo Stelvio, but of course, they're not going to be as comfortable. Now, speaking of modes, we also have a proper off-road mode. But I just think this car is too pretty to get down and dirty. Now, get your mind out of the gutter. I know what you're thinking, which is probably why we are friends. here is nice and light but it is responsive. Maneuvering this car is dead easy. Got a good turning circle, good visibility, big rear window and whatever that you don't see, well let me assure you, these cameras will see everything. They're like a big brother. 
come to think of it, they are possibly the best cameras available on the market. So parking is a breeze. And I know this, you know why? Because I might be a master in many categories. I'm afraid parking is not one of them. And when you take the new GLC on a twisty road, despite the soft suspension, it holds it together. It doesn't fall apart. I mean, you feel the sheer size and weight of this car, but the all-wheel drive system gives you that sense of safety, security and stability. So the new GLC has grown in all aspects. Size, price, technology. It is also much comfier and I think a lot more stylish. And I know you don't want to hear it, but I actually think this price tag can potentially be justified because you're getting a full grown, very premium SUV. As much as this color has grown on me, I'd still go for something brighter. Or better yet, I'd go for the basic color white and wrap it in green. Yeah, that's an idea. I like the new GLC. You know why? Because it's classy, just like Mercedes. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.